A shocking denunciation of Israel, a move to separate China from TikTok, big issues facing Congress, plus what to do about the rise in anti-Semitism and Islamophobia in New York. The Point starts right now. It's been a really big week in Washington, and Bronx Congressman Richie Torres has been in the thick of it. First of all, I have to ask your response to the speech that Chuck Schumer gave on Thursday on the floor of the Senate, where he said that Israel needs to uh, change its tact, that they need a new election, and that there should be a commitment to a two-state solution. Your reaction to that? There's been, you know, a lot of... Uh, concern. Well, you know, Chuck Schumer is the highest ranking Jewish elected official in American history. So the subject of Israel is deeply personal for him. You know, and if you're Israeli or Jewish, then you have a personal stake in what happens domestically within Israel. But if you're neither Jewish nor Israeli like myself, you know, someone like me has no business weighing in on the domestic politics of Israel. I tell people I have my hands full with the messiness of American politics. I have no desire to inject myself into the messiness of Israeli politics. But do you think that this is the kind of thing, I mean, there's been a huge response from Republicans yeah. going after Chuck, saying that he has no right to interfere with the politics of one of our major allies. I wonder if you have a thought about that. You know, he's a member of the Jewish diaspora, and um, it's up to him to figure out what's, you know, what's appropriate for him to, it would be inappropriate for me as a non-Jew to make those statements. But the fact that he's Jewish um, that's an ongoing debate within the Jewish diaspora. You know, there were a number of American Jews who weighed in on, de on judicial reforms, which was a domestic matter within Israel. Uh, and so I would leave that debate within the Jewish community. What, do you think that the blowback from the Republicans is going to be significant, or it's just party politics and it's to be expected? I, I feel like those who politicize the U.S.-Israel relationship do a disservice to the cause. Um, the U.S.-Israel relationship can only succeed on the strength of a bipartisanship, and we should transcend partisanship. We should be committed to sustaining the U.S.-Israel relationship for the next generation, regardless of political party. So my last question is this. Do you think that this helps or hurts the attempt by the Democrats in New York to flip some of those Republican seats that are up for grabs and could determine who controls the House? You know, each race has its own local dynamics. Um, you know, there, there are not every... Not everyone is in agreement on the issue of Israel. Like, I obviously have a view on Israel that is quite different uh, from that of members of the squad. So it depends on the dynamics of the race. It depends on the particular candidates. There are Democrats like myself who are particularly popular within the pro israel community, so it varies depending on the race. So now we have to talk about the other really huge issue that you were involved in in Washington, and that was the move to um, force the company that owns TikTok to divest itself of TikTok because the company is totally um, in control, being controlled by the government of China. Can you tell us what you think the effect is going to be for people? There's millions of people in yeah. the United States who love TikTok and don't want to see it disappear. So there are misconceptions about the legislation, right? To be clear, the legislation is not a ban on TikTok. It's a forced sale of TikTok. It's a divestment. You know, ByteDance ownership of TikTok is a threat to U.S. national security. Because China has a, a, a say on the board of directors exactly. of, of ByteDance. So ByteDance is subject to the control of the Chinese Communist Party. It's required by Chinese law to report the data of 170 million Americans to the Chinese government. That's a matter of law within China. And TikTok is not merely a social media platform. It's become the leading news source for the next generation of Americans. And the fact that we as a country have put our leading news source for the most impressionable minds in our society in the hands of our leading foreign adversary, the Chinese Communist Party, that is an act of self-sabotage. That, that would have been the equivalent of putting CBS in the hands of the Soviet Union during the Cold War. Do you think that people understand that, that they're hearing that is the reason as opposed to, oh my God, I could lose TikTok? There's a misconception. And, and I want to make it, you know, the purpose of the legislation is not to target speech. The purpose is to target foreign ownership. 
or espionage? Espionage, to prevent espionage, to protect the data security and data privacy of 170 million American users on TikTok. Under the legislation, TikTok would have the ability to continue to operate under new ownership. But in other words, there would have to be some ownership that did not have a connection to the Chinese government. Now, could they sell it to another Chinese company, or does it have to be some a company other than a company located in China or controlled by China? So the legislation would separate TikTok or platforms like TikTok from all foreign adversaries, not only China, but Russia, Iran, and North Korea. So in other words, they would have to sell it to another company in another country? Uh, you either sell it to an American company or a company in an allied country. So it can't be one of the people that are, is on our like watch list or terrorist list? Exactly right, yeah. So uh, just once more, explain to yeah. people who rely on TikTok yeah about why you, the, the American government is doing this and why it had such bipartisan support yeah. in the House. Look, there's a concern that the Chinese Communist Party could use TikTok to spy on 170 million Americans. You could easily use TikTok to conduct foreign influence operations and espionage operations against the United States. And we have a national security interest in preventing that from happening. So um, if this bill were going, go, goes into effect, and they sell TikTok, people will be able to get their TikTok from the usual apps that they usually get it for. But if not, if they refuse to comply, these apps will disappear from Apple and Google and other places. Well, look, I mean, if a company fails to comply with the law, then there's the danger that the company could go out of business. But there's going to be no shortage of tech companies that will line up to purchase TikTok. TikTok is the most valuable social media platform in the world. And so I'm confident that there will be a successful sale. Are you at all worried that China will take some kind of action against the United States because of this? Uh, look, we are the most powerful country on earth. We're the leader of the free world. Uh, we should not scare easily. We cannot live in fear of China. Even though they might decide to do something like kicking American companies out of China or taking some action against companies that have business there? I mean, China's presently doing that. China's presently raiding and cracking down on American companies in China. And keep in mind that China would never allow the United States to own the leading social media platform in China. So let's talk about something else that you've introduced. It's something called the George Law, yeah. and it's targeted at George Santos. Yes. Tell me why and what you want to do with it. So George Santos disgraced the United States Congress with his embarrassing presence during the State of the Union. Uh, as you might know, former members have the same floor privileges as existing members. And if you are a former member who left Congress in good standing, then you should retain your floor access. But if you are a former member who was expelled for misconduct, then you should have your floor access revoked. And so I'm introducing the George Rule, which would revoke the floor privileges of expelled members like George Santos. Uh, George stands for getting expelled officially revokes guaranteed entry. So what's the chances that you can get a couple of Republicans yeah. to go along and actually pass this bill? Look, I'm confident the legislation will have bipartisan, bipartisan support. Uh, I suspect we will pass it at least next year. And will it also have to be passed by the Senate as well? Uh, it would only apply to the House because these are House rules. Yeah, so so then, the, Senate, yeah, so, the State of the so, Union happens in the House. So if it just has to be passed by the, by the House and it passes, then it's law? It's for the House, yep. Okay, moving right along, child care. I know you've been really active in trying to get legislation passed that would yeah. increase child care benefits for people across the country. Why is this so important now at this time in our lives? Look, New York City's ground zero for the child care affordability crisis in America. Uh, families in New York spend a quarter of their income on child care, even though the federal government tells us that you should spend no more than 7%. There are families in the Bronx who spend half their income on child care. Eighty percent of New Yorkers wow. cannot afford child care. And as you know, the lack of child care affordability is a barrier, particularly for women. It affects workforce participation, employment. It affects the ability to form families. Uh, and so I'm introducing legislation that would actually double federal funding for child care and index it to inflation so that it keeps pace with the cost of living and be really important for people all across the country. You know, Jimmy McMillan said the rent is too damn high. The same could be said of child care. Okay. We're going to have to leave it right there for now. But our conversation continues right after the show on our streaming channel, CBS News New York.